guys. Thank you so much for joining me nice and early with this particular report. We're talking about the full moon occurring on the 7th of March, also considering there's only 28 days uh, and the sleep year February. On the 7th of March is going to be a full moon in Virgo and uh, she's going to be across from an interesting stellium of Sun, of course, Mercury, almost Saturn and of course Neptune. So there's lots of things happening in Pisces. And we are of course balanced out by a fellow communicative sign of G uh, Gemini that has Mars inside. So um, what does this little conglomerate of energy do? Um, to my knowledge I feel there's going to be quite a lot of stuff getting stuck if you don't do a good job. So, for example, if you are not very good at something and you're still doing it, it's probably going to get stuck. We've already had the Jupiter-Venus illumination at the start of March. So that glamour and that poise and that feeling of absolute heaven um, might start to crash down and come into a little ball because a Venus moon is not very easy. It's a perfectionist uh, moon. It is seeking uh, things that are timeless and it's looking for something that is sometimes external and immortal. Uh, we are heading towards a DC uh, with uh, Ceres uh, and also Fortune being very close to the DC point of the world uh, and also Maki Maki being in, in uh, Libra. So there is going to be quite a lot that has to go if you don't do it right or we are looking for an answer, we're looking for an option, we're looking for a doorway into something else basically. So for example, if you are not a very good uh, spiritual guide, there is going to be an exodus of people leaving your uh, circle. You know, if you for example are not a very good friend, there's going to be an exodus of people leaving your friendship. If you don't do a very good job, it's going to be seen and there's going to be people asking you to improve or answering you and also if you've gotten very well if you are a little bit of a nerd and you like to spend a lot of time uh, perfecting your systems if you naturally have um, been kind of breathtaking for people because of how much diligence and consciousness you put into your life and how present you are to other people that's going to also work out well but we can't have it just this that's really hard. So imagine like, okay, Venus, Jupiter, conjunction, like things are obvious, they're awesome. You could get incredible payouts from life or you could be in a once in a lifetime experience. Like it's a lifetime changing experience, Jupiter, Venus. So this has already probably happened at the beginning of the, of the month of March. There's like a once in a lifetime person, there's a once in a lifetime feeling, there's like that perfect friend or like you have fully like just closed your eyes and recognized you are here, this is it, this is the place, this is the only place that I've ever been in my life. Um, there's like quite a big lump sum of money of course or quite an incredible uh, challenge also so some people have to face and then suddenly it's like well it's not enough. Uh, this very practical and very calculating moon is going to basically bring it all down to size. Imagine having this huge like awe-inspiring feeling or this huge depth or um, even having some incredible damage uh, suddenly achieved uh, in this uh, Jupiter-Venus conjunction uh, on 2nd 3rd of March and then all of a sudden it tapers down to a very ordinary, very stiff, stiff upper lip, you know, they say a person that has, has a stiff, stiff upper lip, you know, means they're really like tense and uh, durable person or they're looking for results. Um, having things that uh, don't need to be said basically on the surface for some people, having to talk about very hard things, having to go to the doctor, for example, and explain every single symptom that you have, which might be very disheartening for you both. You know, having to have that long talk with your lover or significant other about some basic things, like also things like pregnancy, also things like childbirth, things like uh, showing so much energy in front of other people and then like accidentally getting into debt, like for example, great, like going out and spending up and having an incredible trip somewhere and then coming back home with nothing in your pockets. 
you know, there are sometimes people that like to spend all the money they have uh, just to get themselves to that nice feeling of freedom. And then uh, they get home and there is nothing else to be said and uh, there is nothing to be made. Also having um, incredible debt all, all of a sudden. But because you are so strong and because you are so free and because of this incredible gap um, filled by Jupiter Venus, I feel people suddenly say it's no problem. So there's quite a big question probably setting between not just the one or two or three of you, very easily to be questioned as a group or as a two or three, or like how are we going? So it's not necessarily how did I go with this, if you're doing um, things that are private or public, if you're involving other people in your journey, there's going to be probably quite a few questions like, uh, why? For example, if you are a reader and you charge an incredible amount of money for your services, uh, there, there's going to be a question as to why I, 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 are you charging so much for your services? Um, there's going to be also other people stepping and stepping up and questioning you maybe. So, for example, uh, being questioned for your rapport, uh, for how well or how much you do for other people, being also answered by other people. You know, it's a question and answer time. Uh, also, yes, there can be legal matters rising during this time. There could be a legal question mark. Uh, this could also be about uh, the job that you've been doing a while ago. For example, you have built a house that now has fallen down. And as one of the architects that has worked on a house, you have to answer and there is like a legal question. But the feeling is, although there is Mars in a fellow communicative sign of Gemini, and that might get things very heated and conversations might take a long time. It might be a uh, large amount of letters that you have to answer, you have to be there in front of many, many people. Uh, there is a multitude of people wanting to know the answer. There are many people liking your work, maybe, or liking your style, but there's also going to be questions. Um, and then there's going to be probably quite a lot of us that have to speak up on certain topics. So this is about world for forums, this is about global thinking, this is about religion and spirituality starting to be something very uh, interesting. Saturn here is going into Pisces also, you know, there's going to be a big question, why do you do what you do? Or how come this is still happening? Or why do we all have this happening? So there's probably going to be a barrage of energy and information. And if you read in a style that I do, so I uh, take in collective experiences and collective information and I also keep touch with people and I kind of organize myself and affirm myself for also what they say and how they see life in a way. So we all kind of intermingle and mix. There is going to be no end to it. It's like having a huge maze of souls and huge maze of numbers and huge maze just a big giant maze of interactions. So that's a very hard thing for me to look into. Um, then also like the question is how are we going to cut it short? But it can't be cut short because Neptune next to the sun is going to make it unbelievably large and vast. So um, what can I do for you guys here? I suppose uh, with this type of full moon, I think that we have to make sure that we're not reactive. Keeping alkaline, I mean Virgo is a very lucky sign for me now, um, today, because I have uh, worked out a way uh, to alkalize my body. I think an alkaline body would probably be the answer to everything. Like right now, especially in this very alkalizing rabbit year, keeping things alkaline, keeping things tight, uh, being a little bit mean with certain things. Uh, questioning why should I pay this money, why should I be part of this, um, it's very very good to be uh, not necessarily afraid but wary, wary of certain life results, wary of how people treat you, if somebody's asking you for an incredible amount of money for a service, if somebody's telling you how to live your life basically, or if somebody's trying to navigate you or push you towards a certain type of extreme or to be part of a lifetime that has an extremist edge like for example robbing a bank I don't know not necessarily but like things that basically are going into that next 
very scary, very spicy design, um, you've got to be very put and very based. So here critical thinking is probably the best part of, of the design. Um, having just the one simple job to do, having nobody else but this one person. I think here it would be smart to erase quite a lot of experiences of evil, even people uh, from, from, your, for, from your path, from your lifetime, in order to basically get things simple and normal. So for example, if you're always darting around trying to think things up or trying to be part of many different schemes and philosophies, it's so good to basically just have that one person having that one job, having that one mm, status or self-esteem, and then like trying to find out what is it that you have to do to perfect that one pattern. Uh, maybe this is going to be in the realm of thought and wisdom, understanding how to perfect, and maybe it's not. Maybe it's about uh, creating, not necessarily karma, uh, creating a spotlight or creating a heaviness and obviously outlining where there's a burden and where you are now needing to clean things up. This is so heavy for me, you guys, because we would have just gone through this incredible, uh, sensual and radiant Jupiter, Venus. We would have just gone through such an incredible, happy-go-lucky, wondrous, creative and... Uh, sentimental time maybe slightly formal but it's beautiful and then trying to get wise about things and working with that energy that comes up eventually by design that basically gets your attention it's like hey did you look at this paperwork hey by the way uh, I don't want to tap you on the shoulder but uh, can we do this now instead of like doing it tomorrow like can we like make this today so I don't want to disturb your worldview or self-view here. I just want to help you in some ways. So basically what has worked in my case in many many people's lives is keeping things together. Having a minimalist wardrobe for example. Having a minimalist home. Having just the basics works. You know having a uh, neutral diet. Having normal simple tastes in life. You know having uh, normal experiences you know so like and not being too fancy or not too extreme also for example how long does it take you to get ready in the morning you know um, how long does it take you to get to your work you know having those long methods of doing things long time you know spent getting prepared long time working long time designing something also food that takes ages to digest in your stomach you know, like pork or chicken, like everybody already knows this. I don't have to lecture anybody on this. Uh, I don't want to also like accidentally like harm your mental or uh, spiritual well-being by like bringing you uh, too hard-nosed into those topics. But uh, we are speaking clarity. Uh, we are speaking sanitary, normal, simple ways of life. Um, a lot of the problems that people have in their life are just sanitary problems. Uh, Virgo and uh, Pisces are like a very amazing alignment for asking the questions like say uh, did you have a health test you know maybe you need to check your blood count maybe you need to get a blood test maybe maybe you have to make sure that your life is simple maybe you have to I don't know change your sheets more often maybe you need to eat more alkaline diet maybe you need to take some herbs you know maybe all of those things are very simple but then there is like a way in which I feel um, there's going to be other people and also their friends and partners that are going to be able to raise certain things from your life. And yes, I'm seeing people taking into consideration surgery, surgical procedures or doing something kind of intense also for the world to see. We do have Venus and Chiron conjunct, so uh, the energy of the healer. And the classic personalities that walk in and say, look, I can just erase it from your world. Like, I can explain it to you and you will not have to do this again. So that's also very easy. Um, having certain healing uh, crises, for example, taking certain medicines that are power boost, power kick. But not everybody gets out of it in one piece, you know. So I'm seeing quite a big support system worked out with certain healing modalities, but all these extreme um, things uh, that people do, 
for example, uh, taking certain Amazonian uh, herbs that are very, very strong, um, it can cost some people and can sometimes potentially cost them their life or whatever they have or cost them all their savings. Uh, so in terms of having that healer or a friend or a compadre or like some kind of a shaman or uh, an officer uh, or, or any kind of uh, legal authority, uh, take care of things doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. So uh, people going through very extreme procedures um, that don't necessarily have to be had, you know. So like I'm talking about like say gradual one by one thing. So for example with karma, with any kind of um, weight on your shoulders, it's much better and much easier to give your thanks and to pay respect to life and to say thank you God for whatever I have constantly and gradually cleaning your fractals and your psyche instead of having to have this absolute uh, overglow or a huge bout of healing sessions and an extreme crisis because I do definitely feel that some people in terms of their health, wealth and well-being are going to have to go through uh, hoops and jumps uh, and quite big changes have to be made uh, in some people's lives to be able to um, afford better quality of life or to be able to walk out of trouble. So in terms of like large numbers, like huge uh, family fortunes, uh, surgeries and operations and just giant leaps of faith and also some people uh, working with very big problems in their body. Um, I feel... Uh, it's very good to do it step by step. So I'm doing this quite early for you guys. It's the 26th of Feb. We've got a couple of days left in Feb. And then we have about a week in March. You can start today if you're already feeling this brewing, this ah, uh, this heaviness, and maybe there is something that you have to answer to. Maybe there is like a big answering that you have to do. You have to face a big, enormous karma. Or you're feeling an, an, an incredible hurt about something that you are uh, experiencing or doing in your life or somebody else is doing in your life. I trust it's better to work things out spiritually and health-wise in a very simple way. So instead of uh, walking into the realm of conflicts uh, and conflict resolved by, like, say, calling the cops or seeing a lawyer or anything very uh, demeaning and, and, and un, unexciting, uh, try to do things uh, slowly yourself trickling things together yourself, trying to pack things together, trying to be careful and gentle with the people around you, walking away from conflict and confrontation. You know, already uh, I'm seeing that Pisces can be a confrontational month for some people and trying to keep the body alkaline. So basically what I did when it was very highly acidic is uh, I went through a, for example, juice fast Mm, a bowel cleanse. Also, in terms of fasting, it's important to cleanse the bowels or to pass what is in your bowels before you do it because it's toxic to keep things in your body while you're fasting. Um, incredibly toxic and can be harmful and life-threatening for some people. Uh, also, very, very uh, high detox, okay? For example, um, like I'm still learning here, but I found that for some people it is helpful to have a little bit of baking soda and lemon juice in the mornings to force alkalize their body. Now that's not very safe for most people. If you, for example, eat whatever you want and you're just packed full of meat and dairy products, it's just not easy. But like some people can afford to force alkalize if they're keeping their body relatively clean and healthy, if they really need to. So for example, um, certain infections like uh, uterine infections, you know, like uh, for women, uh, you know, it's it's very hard, uh, STIs I think they're called, it's okay to have a little bit of baking soda water uh, because that basically um, helps pass, you know, whatever is inside it and also alkalizes, for us alkalizes the urine um, so it doesn't hurt, you know, things like that, you know, also trying to alkalize the body. Um, that's really, really hard for me to talk about because these are extreme methods still, like in my thinking that's really extreme. But for example, uh, drinking uh, regular dandelion tea or some kind of flower blends and, you know, keeping to um, simple methods of reorganizing the body by just like cutting out certain meats, you know, not eating so much or not eating late in the day. I mean, that is already quite a big service. And uh, yes, like uh, replacing sugar with agave uh, or even a bit of stevia if you, if you really need to do that. 
um, it's not good for everybody, but it, it is helpful for a lot of people too. Um, meaning well, you know, helping yourself mean better, like with certain people, like meaning well, to get out of this um, volatility and uh, argumentative behavior. So like wanting less to be also seen and shown with other people, wanting less to have these uh, fights, uh, wanting less to have these standoffs with people and uh, meaning less also with people that want you to stand up and try to fight them. So basically this is about um, alkalizing probably everything and uh, also understanding what is that alkaline center in your hopes and dreams and trying to get stern on just the things that matter and not basically uh, evolving for certain uh, circles or cycles with people that basically have nothing to do with you and cutting down uh, certain matters. So for example, not speaking so much, not doing so many things so loudly and not to also sometimes be such an optimist uh, when the time is not of that and I talk a little bit about optimism uh, in my Saturn videos. I will be um, exposing them quite soon, a series of Saturn videos. Uh, you see, like, optimism can help you feel less pain and, like, comedy works. But it's not going to get rid of the harsh facts of life, um, you know. So that's basically coming back to these um, thinking patterns and doing patterns. And yes, I also uh, like to bring up, for example, China and other um, archaic uh, ancient cultures, you know, talking about ancient uh, traditional uh, psychology of, of China and other places in the world that have worked it out so well because they basically knew what matters and they remain still pretty karma free as people because it just works and it does uh, walk a certain cycle between the normal simple things, you know, for example in South America you know, they have fire, water, air and earth and uh, there is a certain worship ceremonial cycle uh, that uh, traditionally people have here to basically praise the planet itself and uh, to worship the elements, you know, and to respect the planet or the voice of the planet, which to respect themselves and their children and their predecessors and their children's children, everything like that. So there is like a very special tie that people have to the most important things in their life. And... Um, when you are uh, older, maybe, perhaps, uh, for some people, and you look back at your life, it's uh, no brain as to what it is, unless you had a very, very difficult experience here. Most people remember that it sort of comes back to, you know, the life that they're living, the health, uh, their children, you know, their partners, uh, their mothers and fathers and uh, grandmothers and grandfathers, respect of the people, respect of... Um, you know, their tribes and territories, and then eventually, you know, it comes back to art and fashion and music and experiences, like, that still happens, you know, there is still, like, a whimsical, uh, happy-go-lucky, sweet, sugary, funny side of life, um, but that's not the main uh, bone, so that's not the, the, the bone and marrow of life, and we do have Saturn introduced into Pisces during this month, so... Um, I have to say that it's a very important thing to underline the things that matter in your life and not to feel fear anymore as long as those simple things are in alignment, as long as you have your health, um, maybe wealth and spirituality intact, as long as you can go through the day without pain and ache and hard, hardship, um, you will be okay basically. So that's like the basic um, timeline or the basic power that Saturn um, on that degree gives and then I think that it's uh, quite good also for you to understand where you have gained or where you have meant something where things won't falter so for example long-term contracts with other people marriages and homes and uh, ideals and also separations that have taken place uh, throughout your history so I think that we have to draw the line here and to be clear as to what didn't work out in the past and not have to repeat those results so yeah it's a little dry it's maybe a little bit even drier than you think it's probably a little bit drier than I can uh, imagine this whole moon with this really hard-nosed Mars in uh, Gemini kind of looking around you know um, trying to trying to make it work you know um, at a square like it's very very tough and uh, maybe sometimes it might be even very deranged Uranus also had a beautiful trine to the moon as well 
So he is trying to get things to work, you guys. You know, it's not just about making pleasure. It's not just about the kaleidoscope of color that uh, Aquarius Pluto Hygia would uh, result in. Um, it's not just about fun and joy. It's not just about fun and games and, uh, you know, suddenly wanting, wow, like so much more than ever before because Saturn is going to Pisces. So society is going to feel revived and naturally greedy and hungry for greater. Um, it isn't just about hunger. It's not about love or life. It's not about sunny days and bikinis. It's not necessarily about um, all of that jazz. It's more about the neutral and protecting your grounds like protecting um, your husband, for example, or your wife, uh, protecting your children, uh, protecting your territory from infiltra infiltration of certain uh, predatorial or bad energies. Um, yeah, unfortunately, this happens too, you know, protecting your money from being spent frivolously, protecting your business uh, from bad ideas, you know, protecting your um, uh, physical body from a certain type of bugs you know, certain types of uh, also predators, you know. So we have to be, I suppose, very kind here and try to get to know ourselves through the nature within. And if you are very lucky and you're very intimate with your genetics, and if you really know your genes, uh, that's probably going to be all inside there already. So there is a neutral, natural way that Virgo Moon is going to help you uh, go through things if you are already kind of protected by the spirit and the space uh, and time of your ancestry and if your body already remembers what life is, a, is about uh, based on your genetic pool and uh, how you see life uh, basically uh, through that. So it's like um, a bodily pleasure I feel that uh, also a lot of people need and a bodily cycle of time so uh, don't be afraid if there is uh, quite a lot of talk about you or people asking you to sign something or there's like a lot of paperwork a lot of logistics or a lot of even unneeded conversation bombarding you during this time your body uh, might uh, feel a way out and also for certain people that are very bodily very knowing of their nature and the cosmos within um, there's going to be no questions and I think even one can bypass a lot of the small talk a lot of this yep 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 and um, get through into higher ground, higher grounds and more uh, auspicious philosophies and um, better working collectives um, because of their backbone and I think because of their genetic structures and their genetic remembering or longing for a better path. So that was pretty much it. Thank you so much for um, hearing me out. Take a look at the links below. There is a website, there is a book. There are predictions for every single sign uh, on Patreon, of course, and so much more. Thank you very much. Enjoy, and I will see you next time.